previously on the Skip and Josh Sports Show. Do you think Bill Belichick has friends like outside of football? Like he yeah. has a social life, a personal life, right? I think he does. So he's yes. probably like I don't think he's a normal person, but he's probably a much more normal person than you think. And the Bill Belichick that gets put in front of the camera at the press conferences with quotes like "We're on to Cincinnati," yeah. or what he said this week about when they asked him about Antonio Brown, and he's like, "Oh, I don't know about uh, Splash Face," or "I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't get involved in uh, Insta Twit." Like he made up the names of the, yeah, the yeah. social media. He knows media. exactly what they're oh, called. Like, of course he does. Who in the world doesn't know what Facebook is? You know. <laughs> You're listening to the Skip and Josh Sports Show. Skip. Hey, Cubby. How's it going? It's going great. Um, I'm very excited to uh, tell the listeners that we have another guest today. We haven't had a guest in a while, and we've been promising to have our Buffalo correspondent. His name is Joseph De Benedictus, and he's an editor with uh, Pagula Sports and Entertainment. Joe, how are you this morning? I'm good. How are you guys? We're very good. This is great. It's listening to a live podcast. It I'm is. Using- Usually I'm listening to you guys, uh, you know, recorded in my car when I'm driving. And uh, this is nice to hear you live talking to me. It's kind of strange. Cool. <laughs> well, we're, we're glad that you're able to, uh, to join us today. Um, and uh, we've got a lot of stuff that we want to chat about. But I guess, first of all, um, tell us a little bit about Pagula Sports and Entertainment, how you got involved with them and, and what they do. All right. Well, they are the parent company of the Buffalo Sabres and the Buffalo Bills. And among other things, they actually own a record label in Nashville. Um, They own this uh, complex called the Harbor Center, which is just beside the uh, arena where the Sabres play, which has, uh, you know, uh, two hockey rinks, um, a restaurant, a restaurant. uh, Tim Hortons, like it, it's it's this mecca of hockey and a hockey school and like a workout uh, gym and um, so uh, we do all the well I'm in the creative department and Pugula Sports Entertainment and uh, does all like the creative uh, projects for all these entities um, mostly dealing with the Buffalo Bills and the Buffalo Sabers um, and it is a lot of fun. <laughs> We get to do different things every day. I'm working on, you know, a, a commercial one day and a documentary the, the next. Um, it's it's very very cool. It keeps keeps me going and, and keeps me, you know, you got to be sharp. Uh, you can't uh, just sit back. It, it's it's you gotta you gotta really be creative and work with some great people. Um, but yeah, we get to do a lot of cool stuff. Actually, I was watching television a few months ago, and I didn't know that you had worked on a commercial. And I was watching a Buffalo station, and I saw a commercial for a restaurant. And then I, I, I thought I saw you on television. And I took a picture of the TV, and I sent it to you. I said, is this you? And you said, yeah. So it was, it was pretty funny to see you on TV and That's not right. knowing that you did that. Let me, tell right. you, let me tell you something about Josh. He's the only person I know that sends me almost regularly pictures that he takes of the TV. <laughs> No one else ever does that, but I, I, almost every two days I get a picture of Josh of something that he's taken from the TV, which is pretty spectacular. That's great. That's it's true, I do it. But the thing is, like, if there's something on TV that I want to show someone, how else am I supposed to show them other than taking a picture? I, I'm not knocking else. you. I'm just saying it's like I don't know if it's genius or crazy or combination, but it's it's fantastic. <laughs> So I know that you started to you started to work for the Sabres initially, right? In That's Buffalo. Right. And then things got kind of bigger and bigger and bigger as Pagula bought the team and then you kind of got thrown into this whole Bills world as well, right? How was that like? Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. I got hired for originally this uh, in the Sabres broadcast department and I was working on we do we still do a series to this day called uh Beyond Blue and Gold, which is like kind of the our version of the 24/7, you know, HBO 24/7 of the Sabers. Although it's not continuous, it's much more single story based. Um, but I got really hired on to do, you know, work on a lot of those, among other things. Um, and for a year, that's what I did. And then in that first, this was about three-ish years ago. And then that first off season, things changed. <laughs> the owner of the company actually so. Terry Pagula is the owner, and then Kim Pagula is, is his wife, who is also one of the owners. Um, 
brought us into a room, like the, everyone who was in my original broadcast department, and was like, you, 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 you're all coming with me. <laughs> really? Said, yeah. You're, you're all, and then she went on to explain what they were doing, and they were like, we're doing Pogo Sports Entertainment, which is basically to funnel all the creative and, you know, eventually marketing and accounting into one spot for what we own. At that, that, that time, they didn't own the bills yet. And we didn't know um, that that was going to be ha happening. At the time, obviously, they had a thought, maybe, that they were going to try to, to buy them. So shortly thereafter, we, we had moved our workstations to another building. If you, if you ever see the Skyline of Buffalo, they have one tall building. So we moved to the 33, 33rd floor of that. <laughs> um, and that building is actually uh, mostly abandoned. There's only like five floors in, in use. Because is that H the, is that the building where you did your... Uh... That's storm right. Storm video? I, right. I took the time lapse of the snowstorm. That's right. That's a whole other thing. Um, but yeah, so we moved into there, and there was only like 12 people, and there's this massive floor of space, but there's only 12 people in this company. <laughs> wow. And, um, so at the time, we were doing, obviously, still doing Sabre stuff and did some for their uh, record label, Black, uh, Black River Entertainment. Um, um, so we were doing all that, and then like we're like, hey, we're gonna buy the bills. <laughs> um, so that was crazy. Um, I remember like having a mini party in the office when that actually happened, and then and then things changed uh, some more. We you know we took on a lot more work. Uh, we got some more people to working in the department, and then eventually we moved from there into our current offices uh, down the street. We kind of moved in a triangle from where the arena was. <laughs> It's a very busy office. It's packed, um, and we do a ton of stuff. So that's that's what that's my last three years. <laughs> Great. I want to uh, I want you to follow up a little bit on that uh, storm video that you shot because it went viral, and then all these uh, networks from all over the world were calling you or contacting you, right? Um, and and tell people also if they want to watch the video where they can where they can watch it. Right. So yeah, the, the there is this crazy uh, like snowstorm in Buffalo. I mean, that that's, happens a lot, but this was crazier. And there was this crazy lake effect snow coming off of the, I guess, uh, Lake Erie. Um, and from where we were in the building, we could see clearly, and it was happening quickly, that the, the, it was like a, just a crazy wall of snow and, and cloud that was quickly moving across the, the land. And I, we took this video. Myself and my, my friend at work, uh, Jason Holler, actually took the actual video together. We got it out, and it got over three million views on YouTube. Um, NBC put it on their Facebook, and we still we still get you know calls for that video to this day. And that was that was like two years ago. And crazy. you get and you get royalties now every time someone watches. Yeah, and right, right. It. Yes, <laughs> it's great. Um, not that was not our intention at all. Though. That that was a thing. It was it just happened. We didn't try. And that was that we, it. Was just a you know 15 second video that we wanted to just show our friends, and uh, kind of everyone in the world saw. It. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. But yeah, you can watch that on just Google or, or YouTube uh, Buffalo Snowstorm, and you'll find it. I'll put a link on our website. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah. The Skip and Josh Sports Show is back. So the one thing I wanted to ask you about is you tweeted out this week about this video that you guys made for the uh, one of the Sabers opening. <laughs> with a um, combination of real real time highlights and video game highlights and when i say video game highlights it's you know video games throughout the years right <laughs> so the your your behind the scenes video was really really interesting i was i really loved it oh, and the the final video looks amazing i mean i only saw like you know in your vlog you see it you know from the overhead of like what it looks like in the arena and everything so that guy who's your coworker did he how long how many hours did he spend playing video games to to like record the the, the uh, video game highlights that he it, needed. It must have been like four or five days, and like I, I think he was there like during the night too. Sometimes, <laughs> like it's he incredible. was incredible. He was. He, he had was, a Wii, a GameCube, a PlayStation, a Sega. Yeah, all, like... and there was another crew, uh, another guy, the guy who actually came up with the original idea, Travis, and was at another station, like another computer, playing games too. So they were both playing and getting all this footage. To then match to the actual like. Did historic. they find the highlights first and then say, "Okay, yeah. now I want a highlight of Pat Lafontaine celebrating in the video yeah. game"? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. 
that's what happened. And again, again, just to give backstory, the, the idea is that we, it, the, this video is opening. You know, the, you see a video before uh, the team comes out on the ice in the arena. So we, you know, we were making this game presentation open, and so we mixed video games with with the real highlights. So I remember Jason beside, who sits beside me, was playing the video games, and then I I had a, a folder on my desktop of a bunch of like historic game footage and, and stuff like that so right. we found like a goal a Finnegan off goal and we're like okay let's try to do this so then I, I grabbed the controller oh my god to be the away team so that I can try to like just get out of his way to do the move but the, the funny thing is is that if you don't do anything the computer takes over right for you and like is better than I would ever be <laughs> so blocks him from doing it so it took like a while to get some of these moves because it was tough but uh, it was fun. That's a dream come true for most teenagers. Let's go and play <laughs> NHL, you know, NHL yes. 94 to NHL 2016 all the way through right. every year. Yeah, so it, it was an interesting process, um, and people loved it. Like, that that video also went viral, uh, which was pretty cool um, for us. How about some of that video game fighting footage? I couldn't believe it. They wouldn't let that happen now, I don't think. There, there's some some scenes of like hockey fights, but in the video games where it's like a heavyweight MMA. Yeah, no it <laughs> animations. Looked, it looked pretty intense. Some of the some of those hits there and and, and punches. It was yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, is that? I guess that's what they were trying to sell at the time, right? In the video games. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's a bit off topic, but uh, Skip, this reminds me of the time. This is before I even knew you. I think uh, your buddy was over at your house. And you guys wanted to record a baseball game oh, while God. playing while playing a video game. So you set your VCR or something to record the baseball game. You played the video game. Then when you were done and you went to watch what you had recorded, you had recorded your own got your own video game that you were playing. Yeah, exactly what happened. We wanted to we wanted to keep playing. We were playing Sega or Nintendo at the time, and then we recorded our game. But what you don't know is that. <laughs> Mark no hit me in that game. He threw a nine inning no hitter and we recorded it by accident. Oh. So do you still have it? Well, we'll have to ask Mark, but knowing him, he probably has some kind of recorded version of it somewhere. <laughs> That's amazing. He's got it in his archives. <laughs> the Skip and Josh Sports Show. They don't take your calls. So, Joe, I know that uh, sometimes, and maybe you don't do this anymore in your new role, but in your original role with the Sabres, you would travel with the team yes. to, to road games. So tell me a little bit about what that's like, or tell me a lot about what that's like. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was a fun time. Um, we, you know, at the time, again, it was in Sabres broadcast, so there was three of us who, who kind of shifted on this one position in the broadcast truck for away games. Um, and that consisted of like filming some interviews, getting it ready and edited, and then sending it to the truck tape guys in the truck to make sure they can air it. Um, and then just kind of helping the producer just do little things. Although I wasn't, you know, there was other guys who were much more capable of doing, you know, actual talking to the talent. So a few times I was talking to like, so we have Brad May on our team, so I would talk to him in his ear and be like, okay, what highlight do you want to talk about during the intermission or something? Um, although I, they let me not do a lot of that because I was new and they didn't really train me because it was just the timing was bad, but uh, that was fun. So anyways, I traveled for that and we got to go on the actual team plane, the chartered plane. Oh, I have to hear about this plane. You have to tell me. You probably yeah. had some kind of sworn uh, to secrecy stuff. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, if you watch, you watch, uh, watch uh, documentaries. Uh, them, you see them in the planes, walking slow motion in the planes, or in the planes eating. They're playing cards. Like you see it in video, but I've experienced it. Um, I mean, I'm not with the actual players. Like the broadcast crew at the back of the plane. <laughs> the but, like you. The, so the, I remember the first time I walked in. Like you get driven, or sorry, you. We're on a private. We go to in Buffalo. It's a private airport, a private like terminal airport. You just walk onto the plane like on the runway onto the plane um get up the stairs go go and i'm you know i'm walking through you know between the players and i stay i halfway through there's a sushi station to the, my right on the plane <laughs> on the plane that's insane <laughs> i was like what is happening here so i sit down and, and like the stewardess was like what do you want for dinner <laughs> 
we have this, we have steak, so we got chicken. I'm like, uh, steak? So they, they, the, some of the best steak I've ever had, honestly. It destroys all the myth of airline food, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, it was great. Um, so, and then, then um, one of the guys was like, oh, there's, I see, like, grab something from the, the overhead, like, compartments where you put your luggage. I'm like, what's going on? So I stand up and I look. Just the whole thing, just full of food. <laughs> nice. The overhead. The overhead. Just like baskets of sandwiches and granola bar and fruit. and Oh, God. That was fantastic. As if the sushi and the steak and the chicken wasn't enough. There's snacks above your head. Yeah. Is, yeah. There, a, is there a lot of card playing by the players? And is there a lot of uh, money? Is, do you know if there's a lot of gambling? <laughs> I don't think there's any gambling. No. But there's, there's people, guys, who, you know, they have those, like, they actually have tables and like four chairs almost around it that are like buckled in, so people they do play cards. Right. Um, every, guys that watch a lot of movies and you know kind of just stick to themselves sometimes. A in lot the NBA, time. there's always these classic stories of like this huge gambling going on on the planes. Really. <laughs> but you don't know if it's true or not. But you know, there's the, like the big you know big stories about you know Michael Jordan, Barkley, Iverson, all these guys like oh, wow. with big 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 money apparently on the. Uh, <laughs> on the airplane trips. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't see any of it. I'll, I'll yeah. tell you that. Um, um, but yeah, it was, you know, it, it was really cool. Um, and you feel, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you're not a player, but you feel like you could be in that position. Now, the tra traveling is fun, but it's like, it's, you know, it's, it can be grueling. So, you know, this was a small, like, thing that was like, you can look forward to. Because yeah, you know, plane rides aren't the greatest thing in the world to do unless you love flying, um, so it made it a lot easier. And, and I love actually the chartered planes where they, you know, it's it's like you, they just go. They don't care if you got your seatbelt on or if you're one. <laughs> they just go. Yeah, they go. They, you know, they have everyone has their laptops on. You know, there's free Wi-Fi in the thing. Oh my god! It's like it's I there's knew no. It. It's also oh, here's one thing. So I remember we there was a, there was another massive snowstorm in Buffalo. And every every plane, and we were trying, we were flying out that day, and there were every plane in the Buffalo airport was canceled, everything was canceled, but not our plane, <laughs> 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 because we were in charter, we could do whatever we want, um, and we did. It was terrifying, but we we flew right out of there. Crazy. Yeah, it was uh, it was a very interesting uh, trip. My biggest but pet guess... peeve is uh, when they tell you turn off your cell phone, turn off your laptops, everything yeah, when you go on regular commercial none flights, which I do a lot. And I'm always like, how do they know? Come on, it's nonsense. Like, can a cell phone like is it gonna cause that much trouble like for the pilot? No. And then of course you're on a plane with 40 people with their phones on and their laptops open. Yeah, the yeah. I, that's the thing too. I was the first time I was there. I was waiting for all the announcements, and all of a sudden we're in the air. I'm like, what, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> that's great. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was fun. The, the time that you uh, took off in the storm, obviously the takeoff was scary, but once you're in the air, is it still bad or is it fine once you get in the air? That well, the, for that one, you I, you know you know you know you're in a cloud the whole time until you get above it. So for the first 20 minutes, I didn't know where I was. <laughs> um, yeah, so that that was, but it was I guess it was okay. You know, it was regular turbulence. So then you went from working for the Sabres exclusively to thrust into the world of the NFL and the Buffalo Bills, which is. Yes obviously kind of bigger i mean for me it seems yes. bigger than you know the nfl kind of dwarfs yeah. like what the nhl is right i mean it's so much bigger and money and yes. hype and everything and Absolutely. then i know the one big thing that you worked on and i watched it um is the rex and rob reunited right so mm -hmm. how was that and and how upset were you that rex got fired yeah i was a little sad um <laughs> So yeah, Rex and Robert and I was just a two-part uh, special, like uh, TV show that we did, and I co-produced and and, and edited. Um, was uh, and it aired on MSG uh, nationally in the states. Um, so you know, we spent you know two weeks with with Rex Ryan kind of at at training camp, at Bill's training camp, and and his brother who had just got hired, Rob. Um, so they were great guys, like. That's the thing is, you know, maybe people don't like him as a coach, but you can't, from what I saw and how he treated people and how he treated us, I, I you know, he's a very nice guy and really, and I'm, I was sad that, you know, he, he, they had to let him go, but, you know, that's, that, that's what had to happen um, in the circumstances. But, 
you know, he, he gets, sometimes he gets bad rap, but he, he was very nice to us and uh, gave us everything we needed to make the show great. Um, I think, you know, if it, if he wasn't cooperative, there, you know, it's, there wouldn't be no, no show. Um, right. and he was, you know, he was a funny guy and, and was doing everything we needed to, you know, give us, give, giving us the access like they didn't have, you know, we shot this this scene where they were going through their baseball cards that they their baseball card collection, and they have over like ten thousand or something, and and you know they didn't have to show us that that's not part of them on the field, um, but they did. They let us and they they set it up for us, and so they were very accommodating and very fun to work with. Um, so I guess I it's say, tough, you know, when you know yeah. the people and then you see them. Everyone just assumes, oh yeah, he got fired, and you know, there's a person there, right? And he got yeah. lost his job, and yeah, when you know him personally, I'm sure it's it means something a little different to you. Yeah, but you know, again, that's that's what it is. That's the business. I know, but me and Josh talked about this on another episode. I mean, I don't know, I don't think he did such a bad job. Like right. we're, now, we're getting into the sports part of you know what we usually talk about me and yeah. Josh but I don't think he did such a bad job and actually I think he brings a little bit of a higher profile to like the normally small bills mm-hmm. right there's nothing wrong yeah. with they, that. they they had a 500 record or maybe one game under or something but uh I guess but I mean they didn't have the best roster they weren't expected to win the division they're in the same division as the New England Patriots so that's almost like two automatic losses right there although they beat the Patriots once uh so so yeah, I, I don't think he did such a terrible job. They only gave him two years. Maybe give him one more year. I don't know. There's, there's. I mean, you can, you can find someone who can argue the exact opposite argument. But yeah, I mean, here's here's the thing for like, like coaches, like I mean, or fans, like you know, you're fans of your own teams, and you either you either love the coach or you hate him. Like, I, and you're just more vocal about it the worse he gets. It, it that's just what it is. And you know, I think. I remember when he when Rex first got hired. I think there was a lot of good hype about him. You know, he was a character and you know outspoken. And and I think there was people who just didn't like him from the get go. Just didn't say much. And that's just what happens. I think, I think outwardly he sometimes could rub, rub people the wrong way. Even yeah. though I think internally, I bet you none. I bet you the vast majority of the players that play for him love him. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I remember we interviewed like Richie Incognito, and he was like, "Oh yeah, he was. You know, he's a great." coach and we love playing for him so I, you know I, and he was sincere about it and he gave us you know good reasons why right so. hi there skip and josh will be right back to get in touch with them you can send them an email to skip and josh show at gmail.com you can follow them on twitter at skip and josh and you can visit their website at www.skipandjosh.com and now back to the show so, Joe, I don't know if we uh, talked about this already, but uh, um, now you shoot videos and you edit videos that uh, that play in the arena, you know, between periods and stuff like that. Yeah. So do you do that during the game and then you have to have it ready by the intermission? How does that work and what, what, what does that entail and how many people work with you on that? Um, so a lot of what I do is pre is pre pre done. So like you know I'll edit a video during the week to the airs on in in the game like Saturday let's say or even for the broadcast there's you know videos we do or the documentary the episodes that we do we do it all before and then we air it um, in the game or on on TV or on in the arena um, but yeah there is actually a position too that. If, if you're at a game, you'll see highlights from that night edited and packaged together with music and stuff that airs like an hour later in the game. Um, and that's some, some of the other guys I work with uh, do do a lot of that, um, and it's tough. That's stressful stuff. Um, you know, I, I I like having a little more time sometimes to just think about things, and that that live stuff. You, you sometimes you put stuff out that's just like, if I just had like five more minutes. This would be where we needed it to be, but you don't have that time because you know the the directors yelling at you. Where's that video? Is that video ready? Is that video ready? You gotta get it out. You gotta get it out. We need time. We gotta get it now. Roll it. Roll it. Roll it. You know, it's it's uh, it's stressful. It can be very stressful in, in those live situations. I much I like a lot. You know, I like pre-produced stuff. I don't. I I, I enjoy live, and I think it's very cool. Um, I rather not do it, <laughs> um, but it's fun. There's a lot of fun stuff we get to do. 
It's kind of like Skip, you know how we always look forward to uh, one shining moment after March Madness. Oh and God. I know a lot of the footage that they take from that is, you know, from the first and the second round and whatever, but there's a lot of footage in there that comes from that night's game. And they basically have less than an hour to take the highlights and put it all in there and less then air it. Less than an hour? Sometimes, imagine last year, the, the winning shot of the championship game was in the last second of the game. Literally, the buzzer beater won them the championship for Villanova. And that highlight's got to go in the one shining moment, which is going to air 15 minutes after the game ends. Actually, right? they never they never air it that quickly because they do all the post-game interviews. I know. Well, they, they do they, that they just to buy time. the winning coach, the losing coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then you end, up, you end up waiting like an hour after the game is done to actually see one shining moment. Yeah. Still. But it's a, it's a lot. Yeah, sure it's very stressful behind the scenes. It is for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the, the, obviously there's there's some stress if you're going to film somebody, not live, but like you know people who are you know players or coaches. You know their their time is very valuable, and you don't want to look like an idiot in front of them. <laughs> so it's like you got to be prepared, right? It's all about being uh, preparation, um, and I'm able to do that. And feel much more confident with stuff that's pre-produced because if anything goes wrong, I just edit it out. <laughs> Nobody has to see it. Um, so that that's why I do love, and that's what I do. And I actually film like uh, I'm getting into this myself now, but I do I film my own vlog, like my own life. That was so, the next thing I was going to ask you about. So. Yeah, I know. I know. As not to say, anybody who follows you on social media, you know, sees your your vlogs that you do. Yeah. Right. So we, you know, I I actually just film it all with my iPhone right now, and I. I'm up to like 23 episodes, which is kind of fun. And so I, I edit out anything that uh, I don't like of my life, <laughs> I, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, a lot of it takes place in where I work and you see a lot of what we do. And I'm actually just started, um, I think you were talking about it earlier, Skip. Yeah, that, I, the episode with the video game um, yeah. video, that's like, they're let, they're, you're taking your vlog now and you're, you're there like, it's making it official, like it's a Sabres thing? Or yeah, it's a Pagula sports thing? Yeah, so we're kind of utilizing what I'm doing already, and I'm going to do a second vlog just for PSE, Pagula Sports Entertainment, and they're going to put it on the website and um, and uh, through their Twitter. Um, so I'm doing my own and then taking all the stuff that I you know, do from work and making that separate. So it'd be I'm cutting out a lot of like me eating food. I love that you eating food. I, I told know, you I was going to make that pasta recipe that you made. That's right, yeah. But I still didn't do it. Oh, no. <laughs> it's so easy. I know. <laughs> Check out the Skip and Josh Sports Show on Twitter. You know that little app with the little blue Tweety Bird? Yeah, you can follow them there at Skip and Josh. Joe, you mentioned to me that you're working on something that hasn't been released yet, so I'm not sure if you're how much you're allowed to talk about it. But you you refer to it as Sabers Showdown. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, so it's basically a like a Saber Skills competition, uh, in built into seven episodes of a of a kind of a video series that people can go and pick brackets. Um, I don't know if there's any. I don't think there's any actual betting, but like it's for a, it's for fun. Where you can pick your, I think you get prizes. I think there's some Sabres prizes, um, but you can pick like who you think is going to win in, in online on the Sabres website, and then you wait and watch the episodes. So they're being released during like they'll be played like during the intermissions of of the Sabres games uh, on TV, um, and I think in the arena as well. But right now I'm actually in the process of editing those those episodes, and uh, I just did a promo edit for the to kind of promote the it, that and that hasn't been released yet i think it's all going to be released the, at least the promo in a couple weeks um but yeah the, there's there's like eight i think there's eight players and you know we we filmed it with like seven or eight different cameras and it's basically they they have three different skills competitions and the winner moves on and eventually there's a there's a finals and there's a there's an ultimate winner but uh yeah it's, it there's it's that's an interesting edit because there's my timeline of all the audio channels and all the video channels is is massive. <laughs> right, eight cameras. Yeah, actually, I think there's more, but there's, there's about uh, definitely definitely eight. <laughs> wow. There, you know, there's there's accuracy, uh, there's hardest shot, and there's a breakaway challenge. Um, and very Marty cool. Bur Marty Baron is the goalie. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. Make it fair for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot on a retired goalie. 
So, Joe, you do a lot of other things besides your work for the Sabres and the Bills. Um, you've produced some some uh, reality shows. You've produced some other shows. Yes. Why don't, why don't you tell us and the listeners about some of the things you've done, uh, also about your uh, production company, Jomo Films? Yeah. So I've, <laughs> I've, in the last maybe four years, five years, I've done several pilot episodes for reality shows that I've created with some friends and Back, we sold them to production companies, um, and one of them was about you, Josh, <laughs> which I don't know if uh, your listeners know. Well, we've never talked about it, but I mean, we never talked about it on our show, but I mean, mm -hmm. most people that know Josh have heard about it before, but yeah, I mean, I still go back and watch the the Germ Show pilot episode just all the time. That's so, right. Yeah. It's called the Germ Show because, uh, well, why don't you explain why it's called the Germ Show, Josh? Well, Joe and I used to work together. Uh, there was another Josh at one time in the office and so to to eliminate confusion uh and because i'm a germaphobe they just everyone in the office would call me germ uh rather than josh and so that's so the show even though it's called the germ show it's not about germs it's about me like and, my, and my aversion to germs right yes. yeah, aversion to, okay there you go. but i mean if someone just hears the title and they don't know anything they think it's a show about germs it's a discovery channel episode about the microbiology right yeah <laughs> I think uh, if you Google it, that's the second thing you find. Right. But uh, yeah, so we actually we did we 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 shot a full pilot with you, and uh, we sold that show. That we shot another like promo thing for it. Unfortunately, nothing, nobody nobody wanted it after that. <laughs> but I, I, people still love it, and I think there's so what happened is we took your real life character. And then I created a, with, with Ross, uh, my friend Ross uh, Hayes Trulo, we created a sitcom called Rules of Roommates, which him and I are like the main characters in. And we made you a character based on your own life as, you know, and put you into this show. Um, so that's another thing I do is we do this sitcom that actually we just sold to a production company and we're in development with. Um, so it, it's a lot of cool things. And you're, you're just as much a part of it, Josh, as I am. So it's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun to do these things. Um, yeah, I would never have thought of doing any of them unless you had to, uh, you you prodded me and, and kept bugging me to do it. Initially, I said, no, no, no. And then finally, I caved in and I said, okay, fine, let's do it. I didn't know um, that. You didn't say yes right away? Well, when, he, when Joe first approached me about the germ show, I said no initially because I said, you know, the only people who are going to watch it is going to be me and you, like me and Joe. No one else is going to care about it. And then, and then Joe kept, kept asking several times and, and you know, not really bugging me, but you know, once a week or once every couple of weeks you'd ask. And then finally I said, okay, look, if you want to follow me around with a camera one day, go ahead, follow me around, do what you want. I'm just going to do my regular stuff. And so Joe and uh, Justin did. Um, and then also Joe would sometimes shoot some footage at the office with his phone when I would go off on rants, which I've been known to do. Uh, so and that's, I mean, you've seen the, the end result. Um, the, the funny thing is, well, there's a few funny things, but there's a scene in there, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't watched. It's me in the car on the phone with Joe's girlfriend, now his wife, but at the time his girlfriend, Carly. Basically, I'm complaining to Carly about Joe. But Joe <laughs> edits out all the parts where I complain, and he makes it seem like it's completely different. Uh, so what you actually see, see um on the show that's that's on on youtube is completely different than what's on the cutting room floor amazing i didn't know that behind the scenes i should pitch you another show right now to both of you because it's based on your idea it's going to be called what bugs me <laughs> that's josh's thing yeah it's good. and uh, it'll star josh and jo it'll be we'll follow josh kind of you know the will state at the beginning the episode what bugs him something generic not not sport maybe not sports related and uh, like you know the subway it bugs him why the is it subway he can't even go near the subway exactly it bugs him so and we spend the entire episode researching finding out why it bugs him and why how do you fix it so you would talk to like the subway people and you know you talk to it to it's like a germ specialist and you talk to other people on who go on the subway who hate it and find out why it's so bad and how we can you should definitely it. do this so that's one that would yeah so that that's the format uh, based on your what bugs me i, I like it <laughs> I'm gonna well, do it. we're gonna do it one day you, uh, you, uh, you know me i do things 
when I have yeah, Joe. Idea. Joe follows through on all his ideas. So if he's but Joe, eventually you're not now, gonna have enough time to, for all this, right? That's like, true. That's yeah. true. But we'll make time. This is too good. So Joe, tell tell the listeners uh, your website, how they can follow you on Twitter and, and Facebook and all that stuff. Yeah. So if you go to JomoFilms.com, you can see all the shows I've done, including the Germ Show. Um, and uh, you can also go to watch my vlog too. I just actually got the website yesterday, josephsvlog.com. But that just goes to my YouTube page. But if you want to watch that, or if you want to see where you want to just see it all, <laughs> just follow me on Twitter at Joseph underscore video because I'll just post everything probably that I do from every entity. Um, so yeah, there you go. Actually, we forgot to mention that, uh, Skip, you made a cameo in one of the shows that Joe produced <laughs> oh, yeah. called Bre Breakfast in T.O. What happened and... to that show? You, you, it was too much food or what? <laughs> no. You couldn't go out for breakfast every every Sunday? It was too much food? No, I do that still. I mean, I, I wanted to. People liked it. I, people still talk about that, like say, hey, when are you going to do another episode? No, but we had originally done that show for a, a – a website that right. was just starting out and then the website closed right they, they couldn't sustain what they were doing because they had a great idea to get basically just be the person who commissions shows and then right. they go find sponsors for you right it, it, it didn't work but I it for us for creators like it was very it was cool because um, you know you would get paid and do what you like <laughs> That restaurant was great. It was an amazing breakfast. Right, that's right. I remember you and your daughter were there. That yeah, was... she still dreams about that bowl of whipped cream they gave her. <laughs> There's a great shot of you in the background when you, you see the, the, I think, the steak or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, because we had breakfast and breakfast, huge breakfast for, like, both tables, and then all of a sudden they bring out steak. That's right, because I had... Like, as I if we're going to eat a big steak after breakfast. Well, maybe well, you did. Right, because the restaurant <laughs> wanted to... I did. The restaurant wanted to showcase the steak, because they're not only known for their big breakfast, but their steak was, like, premier. Right. So, we didn't have enough room on the table for all the plates. No. So they gave me... After I had eaten a full breakfast, they brought out steak and eggs. <laughs> oh, my God. It was crazy. It was a but, fun day, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So you've sold at least how many? I know you've sold two shows to production companies. Have you sold more than two? I, I think if you if you count here and there, there's probably about five. Five. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, because I know you've done uh, like the car wash show, and you also yeah. did um, deal with it. That's right. Um, yeah. And I don't know what other what other shows you've done, but I just wanted to let the listeners know that you've done quite a lot of stuff. Yeah, I, I like to try things, and I. I that's I enjoy it a lot. You know, I have a good group of, of friends and who also you know work on these things with me. I usually I usually am the guy who like guys. This is like a stupid idea. <laughs> um, let's do it. Uh, so you know, Justin Moy, Ross uh, Hayes Trulo, Josh, you helped me out very much. You you were our boom up for our first uh, real episode of Rules of Roommates, which. Uh, it was funny because your back was hurting. So, <laughs> I, I have to tell you, operating the boom is a lot more difficult than acting, and I don't know how to act. <laughs> well, you don't act; you just play. You just. I don't know. Play. In that third episode of Rules and Roommates, Josh is really the star, actually. <laughs> Which one was that? The, well, no, no, not the third. Sorry, the episode where um, oh, he's, right. where, where he's stealing the cable. Right, 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 right. That's episode two, I think. Yeah. That's episode two. That, that that's a, that's the whole thing is that we started these shows like these episodes of the sitcom. We were just testing out, you know, if the concept was going to work, if our writing was even good enough, yeah, our acting was good enough, and you know, the first one we did was just like two minute with Ross and I, my my friend Ross and I, just acting out a scene, and we showed a few people and they're like, hey, "This is great." And then we did another one, and people were like, oh, this is great. So then we're like, okay, well, let's just put it on YouTube. Why not? And then we did another, then we did a third episode, and that was a lot more production value. And we put that out, people liked it. And then we did a fourth one, which isn't even out yet. I but know, it's, like it's, a it's the, the lost episode. I'm still it's, waiting for it, but it's like, it's, it's no, you can't get it. Well, I've been, I've been hyping up, Joe, I've been hyping up this fourth episode to right. all my friends because oh, no. I'm in it, I'm in it quite a lot. Yeah, you're and, part of the uh, And now everyone wants to see it, but you haven't released it. No, we have to. We yeah, we're. I'm waiting on Ross to do the audio. He's an audio engineer, right? So he does all the post audio production. So I'm wait, it's on him now to edit and mix the audio together. And uh, so he's and he's a busy guy. So right. that's that's the problem. But yeah, it, it's it's a full you know 
22 minute episode this one coming up wow. um, which is the last one we will be able to to release until you know, and if there's any more it would be with uh, the production company we're working with now the skip and josh sports show is on now Thanks very much, Joe, for uh, for joining us today on the podcast and uh, letting us into uh, behind the scenes of uh, what what goes on in your day to day life. We appreciate it. You know, I'm sure we'll have you on the show again in the near future. And thank you also for for listening to our show on a weekly basis. We appreciate that. And Skip, uh, if you could tell the listeners uh, how they can reach us, how they can find us, and how they can comment. Sure. So skipandjosh.com is the website. There you have all the links to everything. You can follow, uh, like our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter at Skip and Josh and email skipandjoshshow at gmail.com. Again, like the website has everything. And um, on our website, I'll, I'll probably put a whole bunch of links of Joe's stuff uh, this week. All right. Uh, hey, can, can I do a guess what bugs me? Oh, please do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Things that bug me? I don't usually look at stats or anything of like, hockey or anything i mean although i work for the team i just you know i i'm in the video world i'm not in the needing to know of stats too much but i was just looking at standings of you know where things are and you you see you know games play wins loss ot points why can't the points be first column because that's what i need to look at to see who's what the order is in you know what i mean, you mean I, when you're looking at the standings on yeah. nhl.com or yeah. anywhere for that matter because the points are like five in but that's what's determining the order so it's weird to see why is there a 42 above 40 or sorry uh, uh you know the, the game's played is it's just it's it doesn't make sense you know now i could see why you and josh are friends <laughs> because this is actually quite brilliant <laughs> and it takes a kind of weird mind to actually consider that this is even a problem because most people just go about it they look at the standings they look at the newspaper or they look at the websites and they're like games played won losses and, and, and points is at the far right mm -hmm. and it's become so normal for people to see this that no one questions it but apparently you guys are like simpatico you know like i know this is something that like i wouldn't even consider right yeah. but it makes sense wouldn't it make sense 100 percent, it makes sense and there you go I, I, you know what? I've never thought of it because I'm just so used to seeing it all the way at the far right. But you're right. It does make sense. If that's what you're going to sort it by, that should be the first column. And that is the most important thing. Exactly. And then if you want to find out, you know, which team has more games in hand on which other team, you can figure that out later. But it's a good question. We'll have to uh, send it into uh, NHLmedia.com or something like that. Yeah, I'll have to talk. I can try to see if I have some context there. Thanks, Joe. We uh, we certainly appreciate you being on, and thanks for the guest. What bugs me? We weren't expecting that. It's a nice little uh, touch to the show, Thank you. and um, we look forward to having you on again soon. Thank you, and thanks for having me. It was fun. Thanks, Joe. The Skip and Josh Sports Show is over now. Don't worry, there'll be another episode soon.